So this is a quick introduction to the main features of Python uh, for Java programmers or C++ programmers. Um, so the first thing to note about Python that's different from Java is that uh, it has a REPL, that's a read, eval, print, loop, and what you get by just typing Python. And so right now when I'm in here, I can type Python expressions and they will get evaluated. I can have variables and assign values to them and uh, use them in equations as such. So this is very nice and you will be using this a lot for debugging purposes. So, so and when you want to test new code or you want to make sure that you know things work the way you think they should work, it's great. Um, so the next thing to note is that Python is uh, dynamically type language, so it uses dynamic typing. Uh, what that means is that, you know, I can say a is five, like that. I don't have to say int a is five, like I do in Java, and it works. And also, even after I say a is five, which is an integer, I can say a is hello, and uh, a is now hello. But, so the variables don't have a type, or the type changes as it goes on. Now generally, you know, you don't want to do too much of this, go from an integer to a string, you know, unless you really need to, it'll get confusing. So that's dynamic typing. And the next thing is for loops. Now in Java and C, you have, you know, the famous, probably sick of this one, but uh, it goes something like that, right? So if you want to loop over, I goes from zero to nine, you do it like that. The way you would do that in Python is this way. Like that, and then I say print i. And you see that is gonna print the numbers from zero to nine. Um, so there is no other way of doing this, right? You have to use this range. So this is a lot like the for each loop in Java, if you remember. Um, so it's basically the same idea, but that's the only thing you have in Python. So you gotta get used to the range. Uh, the range function, you know, as you might expect, range 10 just returns a list of the numbers from zero through nine. Uh, if you wanted, of course, uh, the numbers between 12 and 22, you would do it like that. Or if you wanted the numbers between 12 and 40, but step by three, uh, you know, you do it like that. So. You can have one, two, or three arguments to range. There's also x range, which does something very similar, well, almost identical, except um, that it doesn't generate everything initially. So, you know, let me just show you that it works. Print i. So you see that works. Uh, but uh, the difference is the x range doesn't. When you call range, it, the moment you call it, it actually generates the whole list in memory. X range doesn't. X range only generates the next number when it's actually needed. So it's uh, X, you want to use X range when the ranges are very long and you know you're not going to need all of it. So maybe there's a break inside the loop, for example. Uh, and this morning I want to you know get out here and you go to IPython. Uh, you can uh, download this for free and it's just another REPL. For Python, but it is nice, um, you know, in that it you know, colorizes things uh, like that and has other nice things about it. Um, so the next is the if else. So I can say if a is ten, then print yes. Uh, else colon print no. So I'm going to print out yes. Now you see here a little bit more about the syntax in Python, right? There's no parentheses, there is no brackets, and there are no semicolons. It looks like this. So instead of all those things, you use the colon, like I used right there after the 10 and right after the else. Uh, you use that one at those two points in particular. And uh, you also use spacing itself. So it's very important that there's four spaces here and four spaces here, otherwise Python will not compile, right? So instead of using the brackets, the curly brackets like Java uses, 
Python uses spaces themselves. So that's very important to remember. It makes, you know, when you look at a big Python program, as you will be looking at, at a lot, it looks nicer. It doesn't have all those brackets and all those semicolons. It looks a lot more readable. Uh, next is function. So Python, you can define top level function like you could in C++. Um, so let's do everybody's favorite, the factorial function, egg. And uh, if x uh, is the, uh, well, less than one, then return one, else uh, return x times factorial of x minus one. Just show you how a function works. So I define the function there. You see again the indentation def is the special keyword for defining a function. There's no return type, right? There's no types or, or they're dynamically types. So, and uh, but you see this has to match here the fourth character, and then this is another column here. I can now call this function factorial of 100, and uh, boom, it gives me the number. You see Python has also uses you know arbitrarily uh, precision arithmetic, so the numbers will get as big as they need to uh, when doing this kind of stuff. Um, so that's nice. And this is like a big number, I believe, in Java, or a big decimal, or decimal, I forget. So that's uh, a function there. Okay, the next day, a nice thing about Python, it has two built-in data types. One is the list, uh, which is uh, basically like an array in Java. Um, or is it it's called an array or a list in Python? And uh, so I define it like that. This is a, an array literal. So then when I say a of zero, that's going to return one because that's the first element. A of three is six. So zero, one, two, three, six. Uh, this, as you might expect in Java. Um, but there's other nice things about it. So if you want it, just you know, the these guys in the middle, I could say from two to three, and uh, or make it two to four, so we get two of them. So this is well, it's a slice. So when you use the colon here, you say the start index and the end index. And so it's going to go from zero, one, two to three, four, non inclusive. So it's going to return five and six. So that's very nice. Uh, you can omit one and then it'll go from the start to position four. You can omit the other one, of course, and then it'll go all the way to the end. Uh, you can also use negative numbers. And so the, if you use a negative number, it's going to count from the end. So minus four is um, minus one, two, three, four. Uh, so that's nice. Right? So you got all those slices. Another nice thing about it is that um, you can use the same slicing uh, on a string, right? So if I want the characters from the fourth one to the end of a string A, now remember now A, this is the string, it's the same thing. So really nice, right? So if I want just, uh, you know, F equals uh, file.txt, so I want to adjust the extension uh, is the last three characters. Right? So we'll do it like that. Um, so it saves you a lot of time. Uh, so those are the arrays in Python. Then the next thing, oh, an awesome nice thing about this IPython is I can type in F dot and then hit tab. And since it knows that f is now a string, it's going to give me all the methods that I could call on that string, or f.d has to be decoded. Uh, so uh, that's why I like it. You can now, uh, it reminds you of everything that's available, whereas the normal Python REPL doesn't do that. So what else? Um, if, um, if a was a list, then I just go back. 
there's other methods associated with a list. Uh, there's the append, uh, which we use to add an element at the end. Right, so when I append 11, it goes to the end. Count, of course, is going to give you the count of elements. Um, the count, the number of times the number zero appears, number two, and then number one. That one appears one there. Um, so count tells you how many times each one appears. If you wanted the length, by the way, it's a little bit tricky. It's like that. Uh, the actual length of the arrays given with that, uh, you have to call the len function on a. So a dot len doesn't work, or a dot length doesn't work, but like it works in Java. So remember that. So that's the length. And uh, yeah, you can you know read the manual and check out all the other methods you can call on arrays and strings. Um, the last data structure that I want to talk about is the dictionary. So this is just like a hash map, and here's where we use the curly brackets. So that's an empty dictionary. A dictionary works. It's a hash table, right, or a hash set. So the name is Bob. So now A has the name of Bob, and A has an A44. So there's Bob, and then you know I can get Bob's age, 44, like that. Or I can get uh, A's name easily like that. So it's very nice, right? So you have the, the key value store, you have keys and values, and if you iterate, over a key value store, I'm going to print i there. You see, it's going to actually give you the keys, the age and the name. And of course, you can use those keys uh, to print out uh, the values. So, and uh, there's all these other methods that you can use on the dictionary. So those are the main built-in data structures that you will be needing, especially for this class. Um, now the next thing, or final thing, is actual classes. So I'm going to create a class, say boy, and then def um, set name self dot name is n. Get name so that this is a class with two methods see it looks a little bit like Java um, the, uh, the weird thing is the self I'm using the self variable self self so self is just like this this in Java remember uh, except in Java this was optional right so if you're within a class in Java you can say this dot whatever, and that would be the instance variable. Uh, in Python, self is not optional. So you have to say self.name. If you only said name here, uh, it would actually refer to the global variable name if there was one. Or if not, one would be created for you. So remember that. Right? So, uh, instance variables always have to start with self. Or when, you, when you're referring to an instance variable, always say self. and the variable name. And similarly, when you're declaring a method, the first argument should always be self. Technically, this doesn't have this could be any variable, right? But we always write self as the variable name, so use that. Um, so I can create now a new boy like that. So notice there's no new keyword. I'm just saying boy. And uh, so B is now boy, and uh, I can set his name to Bob. Notice I can use either single quote or double quotes, Python doesn't care. And then I can get his name. Uh, oh, you see, I messed this up. I did set def get name, return name. So that's why this is not working when I try to get the name. Uh, so, uh, I don't think I want to 
write all that again. Um, so never mind that. But if if you had the self dot name there, uh, uh, you could get the name. Now notice also though that the set did did work right. So I have set name self dot name is n, and I uh, I was able to call b dot set name Bob. So when I say b dot name, that's going to return Bob. Uh, so you know in Java you have private and public and all this stuff. Basically in Python everything is public. So once I have a, I create an instance variable, anybody can access it and anybody can write to it. So I can change his name to Tom, and then uh, you know, oops, it is Tom. Um, so something else you should know. So this is just to get you started. I mean, and these things cover basically 90% of all the programming or 99% of all the programming you'll be doing. You know, this view read up on, on these methods. Uh, but Python does have a lot of fun other stuff like, you know, magic methods and decorators that you should read about. Um, and they do, they are useful every now and then.